Gordon McDonald uh, wrote these words. He says, in my own childhood and boyhood, my father was the refuge from all the ills of life, even sharp pain itself. Therefore, I say to son and daughter, who has no pleasure in the name father, you must interpret the word by all that you missed in life. All that human tenderness can give or desire in the nearness and readiness of love, all and infinitely more must be true of the perfect father, the maker of fatherhood. C.S. Lewis says it was the writings of George MacDonald that God used to father him. Now, what this can be challenging to you accept, I believe it is very true. Your experience with your earthly father may be joyous like Gordon MacDonald, or it could be the other extreme, even somewhat elacious. But whatever God it is, in whatever situation uh, that God has entrusted to you, is what I'm saying, is perfect in this sense. Uh, your earthly father was perfect in this sense. If you respond correctly to God's providence in your life, that's what opens up the revelation of God as the perfect father. Listen to these profound words. Our parents are the delivery system to bring us godly mothering and godly fathering. Whatever was lacking in their delivery, the package was God's, not theirs. And God provides ways in which he restores the years which the locuses of bad parenting and personal rebellion have eaten. Implanting in our hearts the image of himself so that we can live parented by Him. As we are reparented by our Heavenly Father, we are freed from the brokenness and sin of our fallen family relationships and set free to be the men and women which God planned from the beginning of time. We become His children and live in His family. I think of an individual whom I deeply respect. And I remember hearing his testimony one day. He said there was an individual that came up to him and said, Wow, who was your father? As if to say, I am so impressed with you, boy, I'd, I'd sure like to, to know where you came from. And the dear individual said, I've never met my father. Jesus is my father. I remember when he got married, how hard he tried to, to get it, invite his father to his wedding, but to no avail. But you know, God was his heavenly father. I think of my own father whose dad died before he was one year old and so he was he had a wonderful mother and she went to work as a nurse uh, to provide for the family he was placed in the home of an aunt who didn't have children but when that aunt became pregnant she wasn't sure there was place for my father and her son that was going to be born and so he was placed in the home of the aunt's sister-in-law but you know there he fell into the hands of God that dear lady whom I affectionately knew as my grandmother along with my dad's mother who also was a wonderful grandmother um, her name was Bernice Lewis we called her B my dad called her Mama B uh, was a very very godly lady she uh, wonderfully nurtured my father. There were times, that I learned this later, that my dad would come home crying from the play playground as a little boy. Because kids can be cruel, and they would say to him, you don't have a mama, you don't have a daddy. And he was, he'd come and he'd put his arms around Mama B and said, you're my mama, aren't you? Oh, yes, I'm your mama. I'll always be your mama. You know, one day, my father and B had had, Mama B had had multiple miscarriages. She'd ne never been able to have a child of her own. And so, uh, what a gift my father was to her as, as her son, and what a gift she was to my father. Well, one day, my father saw a little red-headed baby girl and said, uh, Mama B, let's get one of those. And so she hem-hommed around, and, and, and so my father said, 
tell Daddy Willie to buy us one of those. He was in a little country town, but he was sort of the man of the town. He owned the country store and started the bank and uh, had the, uh, the cotton gin. And, and so tell Daddy Willie to buy us one. Well, she says, well, it doesn't quite work that way, but you just prayed. He prayed his heart out for a baby sister, a redheaded baby sister. Well, that nine years younger than him, a little baby red-headed girl was born. My dad rode his bicycle 10 miles down the Cottonwood Road to the Dothan Hospital to see his baby sister. I now know that dear one affectionately as my Aunt Sylvia. You know, God gave my dad maybe a challenging environment, not his dad dying before he was one year old, but you know, as God parented him through the wonderful providential provisions uh, of being placed in another home. Uh, God took care of him. Uh, there are challenging situations perhaps, and maybe you have experienced those, but would you open yourself up to God? There is one perfect Father. I remember being asked to write a, uh, an article for a, uh, a magazine on fathering, and so I had a little bit of time, and so I, I did a computer printout of every reference to the word Father in the Bible. And I just I'm gonna look all those up and just see where that leads me. Well, some you know weren't weren't that insightful. This person was the father of so and so, but uh, I read all those references. And I remember writing the article on the one perfect Father God. That seemed to be the message of the Bible. You have a perfect Father. As you respond to the providence of God in your life, which may have a lot of pain in it, as well as a lot of joy, that will open up the revelation of God as your perfect Father. Lord, would you gloriously father each one of us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.